Hello there and welcome back to the Agassino Zynga show with I, your host Agassino Zynga and this is episode number 721, that is 721 of the Agassino Zynga show with I, your host Agassino Zynga and I hope you are doing well wherever this podcast may find you, I hope you are doing swimmingly. How am I? All good, all things considered, it could be better. There is a current conversation going on um, on the United timeline with Eric Ten Hag is going to get fired or not. People are doing the blame game thing, pointing fingers. There's a stories coming out about Rafa Ravaran and not being injured the other weekend or he wasn't ill and he was actually didn't want to be considered for selection because he felt like he was unfairly overlooked for the derby. Loads of stuff happening with United, loads of stuff happening out there in the world. So it is a little bit crazy, but hey ho, here we are today to crack on with all of that. But before I get into talking about all of that, I wanted to quickly mention some of the books that I'm reading this month um, of November so for those of you guys out there that care about the books that I read and just to kind of highlight where I am at in terms of thinking about how I approach my reading at the moment. Because something I've realized, I think over the last, what, year and a half, maybe two years, has been that I've definitely not read as much as I did in the past and obviously a lot of it has to do with kind of like my lifestyle overall has definitely drastically changed in terms of going out to work every day and commuting and stuff I don't do anymore and that really was uh, something that I kind of overlooked in terms of giving me forced times to read because for the most part even if my journey was under half an hour it still gave me 20 minutes either way to work to get to bit to do a bit of reading and usually I took advantage of it because I was listening to music any other time when I wasn't traveling to work anyway so why not just use that time to get a bit of reading in so if you do a 20 minute journey to work and back to back from work on the train you at least get 40 minutes in per day and then you've only got to make up 20 minutes to make it an hour so you could easily get an hour of reading done per day and if you're a good reader like I am or you can read quite quickly then most often especially if you're reading stuff that you actually enjoy to read you can actually get through quite a few books so even though people used to you know suck my dick about it all the time and make me seem like I was some sort of Einstein figure because I got through so many number one I was picking stuff that I actually enjoyed and I actually thought I would like to read and number two you know as long as you're disciplined in terms of just making sure you're reading a little bit every single day you can usually rack up um, a really crazy amount of books in a very short space of time but something I also realized that I kind of took for granted granted was that I really wasn't on social media as much as I am now I think nowadays because I'm at home a lot because everything involves kind of working from home being kind of remote all this sort of stuff I'm on my phone a lot more than I was back then I think so anyway because I think even though I don't use Instagram as much and I'm mostly on Twitter my usage of these apps is still a lot higher than it was like in what pre-2020 right so I've committed or I'm kind of using up a lot of my free time on these apps so then the free time that I had to read and stuff has now gone so then when I'm and obviously my habits and my kind of um, overall concentration levels have definitely waned so then when I'm trying to open a book it's not really hitting me the same way or grabbing me the same way it did in the past because I'm having to fight the temptation not to touch my phone or not to get bored. So I'm having to kind of relearn how to read again, which is crazy when you think about it. Like I said, I was getting through like four books a month, maybe sometimes more. I think the max I got through was like six or seven. So I was getting through a a ton, right? And the target this year was to do 100. I've definitely fell short of that, but still... I'm not somebody that doesn't read and I'm still finding it difficult. So I can only imagine how it must be for those of you guys out there who don't give a fuck about books at all. It must be like absolute torture. It must be like getting waterboarded when somebody tells you to pick up a book. So I only just recommend this sort of stuff just for my own sort of interest or whatever. And also I think, you know, sometimes when people read books, it's actually quite cool because what ends up happening is that even if you don't want to read it, you can get to find out what the book's about just by me talking about it. Because of course, once I finish it and I review it and stuff, I'll have little blogs entries up available for you to check out. And also I'll definitely mention it in the pod later on. So if you want to then, you know, appear smarter to your friends, you can just regurgitate the stuff that I'm saying. So 
let the less said about that the better but anyway um as i mentioned before four books here that i'm reading for the month as you can see on the screen um the first one to start off with is detailed as be useful seven tours for life by arnold schwarzenegger if i read the inside sleeve it says as follows the seven rules to follow to realize your true purpose in life they're still by arnold schwarzenegger from his own journey of ceaseless reinvention extraordinary achievement available for absolutely anybody um, the world's greatest bodybuilder, the world's highest paid movie star, the leader of the sixth largest economy, um, that these are the same person sounds like a setup for a joke, but it's not a joke. This is Arnold Schwarzenegger and this has not happened by accident. Arnold Stratos, Arnold Stratos, no, how do you say that? Arnold Strat Stratospheric, Jesus Christos, Arnold Stratospheric um, success happened as part of his process as a result of clear vision, big thinking, hard working and direct communication, resilient problem solving, open minded curiosity and a commitment to giving back. All of it is guided by the one lesson Arnold's father hammered home into him above all be useful as arnold conquered every realm he entered he kept his father's adage close to his heart written with his uniquely earnest blunt powerful voice be useful takes readers on an inspirational tour through arnold's toolkit for his meaningful life he shows you how to put these tools to work in service of whatever fulfilling future we can dream up too many of us struggle to disconnect from our self-pity and connect with our purpose and early age Arnold forged the mental tools to build the ladder out of poverty and narrow-mindedness of his rural Austrian home hometown um, tools he used to rung after rung after rung from there now he has shared the wisdom with all of us as he puts it no one is going to come rescue you you only have yourself the good news it turns out is that all you, is that you are all you need so yeah really good little book there i think it kind of follows the basically 10 rules for life that jordan peterson put out so basically a toolkit for life um i haven't started this yet obviously as you guys can tell because i've got a few other things i've gone through then of course i've got the britney spears um woman in me book that i'm reading at the moment which is absolutely fantastic this is the one i've actually started and i'm already halfway through it it's a really quick read i think even if it terms of thickness it's not the most um dense book out there but just the first opening chapters it was a very strong it was a very um clear to me that this britney spears lady has lived a, a very interesting life to be fair and it does kind of give you an appreciation understanding for her journey and the fact that she's still here amongst us because the stuff that she's gone through with her family personally you just think to yourself wow boy this woman's been through a lot and she's still relatively young do you know what I mean so to go through all of that and still be here with us and still be kicking ass and stuff is really incredible accomplishment so I definitely recommend if you're in you know intrigued about the story of Britney Spears definitely check out this autobiography called The Woman in Me um, I'm sure most of you have probably heard about it because it's been everywhere and people have been taking experts about it and talking about it I think Justin Timberlake's probably suffering the worst because of that book then of course I've got the Down the Drain autobiography Kurt from julia fox the one time very short-lived fling of Kanye west but also an actress of her own volition i've always been intrigued by um julia fox not for the main boy reasons of when they all saw her you know scantily clad in her underwear and shit in that movie uh, i think it was um, uncut gems but just for the uncut gem side of things because if i remember correctly uncut gems was one of those movies that was billed to be a big thing but then it came about i think just before covid so just when the lockdown was happening so she didn't really have a time to promo the movie to get any of that real press that would have probably helped maybe galvanize or inspire people to go and watch the movie or just you know put her out in the limelight a bit more and i think at the same time she also had a kid so i remember just reading about it thinking fuck man imagine how hard that is to kind of wrangle in your head right this movie that you're thinking is going to take you to the stars doesn't take you to the stars then you're pregnant and then you're kind of a single mother at, at the same point it must be such a weird thing to kind of have to figure out especially during covid so i was always intrigued by her story and then of course she's got that part of her story the early years which i'm also aware of of her being a bit of a, like an art hoe back in the day in the lower east side type of scene and shit and hanging out a lot of the guys and girls that i'm kind of you know had grown up with kind of admiring from afar and stuff so i'm curious to see what kind of makes her tick and stuff and you know it may be a bit early for her to have an autobiography i think she might be in the mid 30s or something but still you know it might be an interesting insight memoir nowadays when she her memory is kind of fresh in terms of understanding you know where she's come from because she's got a lot of tragedy in her past too 
Um, I know there's a lot of kind of, you know, because especially that, that scene back then in New York, Lower East Side, downtown and stuff was riddled with people that were on heroin and shit. Because I remember a lot of the people that I kind of grew up kind of idolizing like Dash Snow and shit, they unfortunately passed away because of it. It took a real grip on people. A lot of people kind of was able to escape and sort of get sober. So big up Dan Colin and a few other people, Ryan McGinley and all these type of guys, but a few of them succumbed to the drugs and stuff. So I'm sure she's got interesting stories to tell. So this actually be a good one as well to check out and then of course finally we have the walter isaacson elon musk book which everyone's been talking about as you can see here um and this i've been hearing good really good things with it, so i can't wait to read this because i've read from other people that they're saying that this is a really fair portrayal of elon it does paint him out to be the hero and the amazing guy that he is but also in terms of a, of a human and maybe some of these business decisions it also kind of paints a picture of a kind of you know um a genius that isn't without faults basically and um i think that's something that is needed in these type of books you need to be kind of brutally honest to a point because i think that's what made water as water isaacson's book about steve jobs just before he passed away to be so poignant right because it painted the story of somebody quite brilliant but it also was utterly utterly brutal in terms of his depiction of how he treats people and how he came up and stuff and whatever it may be and some people's you know reception or perception of him you know close family and friends and stuff so i'm really i really can't wait to tear into this as well when i finally do get the chance but um four memoirs or four autobiographies from four different type of people there so check out so i'm really eager to tear into that so if you are um, into that, make sure that you click the link and you'll see all the list of the books I'm reading as well. So you can kind of grab them if need be. And you can grab them if need be. So moving on from that, before we just catch up on some of the football stuff, because I forgot to mention it on the previous pods. So most of you will know that United unfortunately lost 3-0 at home to our great rivals, Man City. And to be honest, not much of a surprise in terms of a result. I think the performance as a team was a bit concerning, um, especially when you consider we started the game pretty well. The first seven minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, however much you want to stretch it, definitely wasn't over 15. We troubled Man City. City. we had a few not say a few we had a couple chances that were kind of half chances but on our day individual brilliance in previous matches would have probably gave us the result and I felt as if when I was watching the game in real time Man City also felt that they felt like they didn't start too well they started a bit slowly maybe they already took us for granted because they just assumed they'd win the game and they kind of had took their foot off the pedal and I think they were happy as soon as they realized we weren't going to score I think they then were able to assert control or dominance on the ball after the 15 minute mark and it was no coincidence that that then eventually led to the penalty incident where unfortunately um Hoyland pulled back Rodri in a box which then led to you know Haaland taking the penalty and selling fucking Onana the wrong way so I think all of that sort of dominance really if anything, zapped all the confidence and the belief out from our players. Because I don't think Man City played even that well, especially from previous performances um, where Man City have absolutely destroyed us. I thought they were in second gear, really. And they didn't need to go anywhere because I think they kind of had us in the palm of their hands. They were toying with us. They had always controlled the ball. And I think one thing you could always tell when I was watching the game, a very kind of clear example of how far apart we are from each other and the fact that Man City are clearly on another level when it comes to structure and it comes to their team and quality is the way that the players were receiving the balls in tight areas, the way that they were manipulating the ball, the way the ball was progressing up the pitch. Everything from Man City just looked crisp and intentional and purposeful. And again, everybody on that pitch looked like they had supreme technical ability when it comes to controlling and manipulating the ball. Whenever it came to United players, it seemed a bit clunky. It seemed a bit all over the place. It just didn't really seem to go anywhere anytime soon. So that was the only real concerning part of it. It was like, Jesus Christ, after all this money spent, after having one of the highest wage bills out here, having whatever else, you know, all these re revamps, redones of the team and whatever, we still don't have a team that you can see that looks like they're comfortable on the ball, that looks like they're comfortable in possession, that looks like they're comfortable in tight areas, that looks like they can pass the ball consistently to their teammates, you know, within five yards and stuff. It doesn't seem to happen too much. Um, I was kind of sorry and sad for Dallow. Um, with Bruno Fernandes playing as a makeshift right winger, which is 
always annoying. It meant that he was essentially playing as a fullback by himself without no cover. Um, and Grealish was absolutely tearing Dallo apart. He was receiving the ball, spinning, going at him, cutting in, cutting out. He was doing whatever he wanted to Dallo. And I think any moment where Bruno Fernandes did try to help Dallo out, all he was trying to do was just take the wind out of Grealish's sails by flipping, fouling him. So Bruno Fernandes was absolutely shocking that game, to be honest, as was Rashford, as was all our players, to be completely honest. But one of the things that really kind of disturbed me about the game in overall and something that really kind of left a bit of a sour taste in my mouth and made me think like what the hell was going on with our club what the hell was going on with our manager and specifically in Eric Ten Hag we played pretty decently I thought in the first half right we we had a okay solid midfield block I think Amrabat playing as that deep lining um defensive midfielder in front of Maguire and Johnny Evans I thought provided us with a bit of solidity in that midfield where I didn't feel like Man City were finding it easy to get through us through the middle they were basically getting a lot more joy by spreading the balls out to the wide um, flanks and obviously having Grealish and um, Foden you know kind of stretch our defense out wide a bit and then kind of send the balls into the box but I thought for the most part we did stop Man City walking through us in the middle of the park but then at half time for some odd reason I have no idea why that exactly happened but at half time for some odd reason he decided Ericsson Hag to take off Amrabat for some reason and then put McTominay playing in Amrabat's position which is a deep lining defensive midfielder now I'm not the biggest Tony McTominay fan I think he's fucking awful he probably is nowhere near United class and he should have been sold a very long time ago but it's clear to see that his best position is playing as an attacking midfielder Maybe not even as a false nine or whatever, or just a backup striker. No, an actual attacking midfielder, like a conventional number eight, that's able to run late into the box and score the goals that he scores. I think he's obviously clearly really good at that. When it comes to influencing the game in terms of touch, you know, passes and whatever else, he's not going to be that guy. But it comes to making late surging runs into the box and being just a nuisance in there, having a good strike outside of the box and being able had to have decent heading, he's definitely great in that position. So if you're going to play McTominay, the only play you, place you can play him is further forward as a midfielder. You should never be playing as a, as a DM. I think he's kind of cursed um, because of his size, right? He's like this six foot plus um, Scottish guy, right? He's built like shit. He's built like a fucking brick shit house. So people just assume because he's really jacked and he's really tall and he's really athletic that he should be playing as a defensive midfielder. But he's not. He's an attacking midfielder. So Ayrton Hawk swapping Amrabat for... Um, McTominay in that position was bizarre and I felt like was the sign that then Man City took control of the game in the second half because if I'm not mistaken the second goal they scored from Haaland just after the second half was like basically four minutes into the second half around the 14th minute so clearly that little weird tactical change that Eric Ten Hag did never worked and we looked all over the place from then on it was basically you know a miracle that it only ended 3-0 because Man City were in total 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 control so that for me was really um a big warning sign because we all know the players are terrible none of us are sitting here saying that Eric Ten Hag should be expected to be making miracles with these players but already they're like their performance levels aren't the greatest so if you give them an excuse to throw the towel in they will and I feel like Eric Ten Hag gave these players an excuse because he took off Amrabat who was playing okay at that time even if he wasn't playing the greatest he was still providing a defensive cover and also plugging in holes um you know in front of Maguire and Evans and the entire back line so it prevented Man City to easily walk through us in the middle which would left them to only you know attack us from the wings but the moment that changed they were attacking us from all over the place they were knocking balls over the top through the middle out on the flanks it was an absolute bloodbath and honestly it was a miracle absolute miracle it only finished flipping 3-0 I swear to god it was an absolute miracle it only finished 3-0 but then to make matters worse to make matters worse just the other day United of course decided to lose again at home <laughs> and this time in the flipping Carabao Cup the League Cup against Newcastle Newcastle basically got revenge um from us beating them last season on the way to winning the flipping trophy itself and to be honest this was even more frustrating and even more demoralizing 
because if anything a lot of us myself included were like oh why does the manager rotate this team enough why doesn't he have the players on the bench who need to have opportunities to play playing why is he always playing Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford and never get dropped why 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 well Exeter and Hag decided okay cool you guys want these guys to play here you go he put out a lineup of guys that you would largely consider are the second team, um, especially in midfield. And it didn't work. It really didn't work the entire game. And if anything, it probably felt like it was less of a individual personnel thing and just more so an inability to like be organized, um, to play for each other, to plug gaps, um, to give a shit really. That's essentially what happened because I felt like as soon as Newcastle scored their first goal, our heads completely dropped. And don't get me wrong, the first goal was very well taken. Um, I think it was a ball over the top that essentially Almiron ran onto and was able to strip whoever he was running, um, trying to defend against him and got one touch, you know, over flipping on Nana's hands. And Nana still was looking a bit shaky to me. And I thought, to be honest, all their goals were really well taken. My favourite probably would be Joe Willicks from them, especially, you know, I, I love a good side foot finish outside the box and that was a really well done from him. But, I feel like Man Newcastle, again, similar to Man City, didn't have to do much to win. I think we kind of made it a lot easier for them because as soon as they scored their first goal, the players kind of rolled over and died. And for me, that is kind of unacceptable, especially when you think about where we are this season, what it's looking like we're going to end. You would imagine a League Cup, although I'm not bothered about it, would be one of those competitions that Ayrton Hag would want to use to galvanise a team. Whenever you're going through a bad run of form, bad patchy run in a league, or whatever it may be, you'd want these competitions to come around so he can give you a little bit of respite. But the way that these guys are performing was absolutely crazy. Even though I said, I think before the game started, I said something to myself like, oh, Newcastle probably need this League Cup more than we do now this season, especially considering the money that they've invested into their squad and where they want to go and stuff. Just having that trophy, you know, after such a long time would obviously be something that they would obviously um, be all over the moon about. But the concerning thing, again, for us as a United fan is just we don't really see or myself I don't really see what this team does in training there's still no identity there's still no way of playing the patterns of play are all over the place like the individuals are still very questionable you look at someone like an Anthony and it's like 80 whatever million what that was paid for him in world you know a record signing or world record but a record signing for United and the fact that he still looks so painfully average and I don't really see the use for him as well in the team and the fact that he keeps continually getting picked and then of course the Maguire Lindelof partnership at the back was really bizarre um Regulon playing at left back didn't really offer much neither did Dallo um Casemiro looked very shaky and had to go off I think with an injury at half time Mason Mount is looking like one of the most pointless signings of all time uh I don't know why he wouldn't be bothered to signing him we probably should have kept hold of Fred if you're gonna sign the Mason Mount because Fred I still think nowadays is miles clear of Mason Mount as a player and then of course the most concerning part of it was Medjbury Hassan Medjbury because I don't know again do we see much in him as a player apart from kicking people and stuff has he got much technical ability outside of just being able to run and clock up loads of kilometers and stuff it doesn't look like it. he doesn't look like a really good technically proficient player either so there's a real mismatch of players here that I don't really see what it makes sense or how it's going to work for the long term or what you want to get with these players but one thing that is for sure is that this result and maybe the next result that we're going to have coming up for fixture for United in the league, I feel like are going to be very testing moments for Ayrton Hall because so far, if you you know read some of the papers and some of the rumours online, there is a suggestion out there that his job could be under threat and most likely he could get sacked sooner rather than later. And for me, I personally have no qualms if he does get sacked or if he stays to be honest because I still think the biggest problem at the club isn't the managers isn't the players even it's definitely the board and the owners until we get rid of the Glazers we are doomed I think we've basically seen evidence of that over the years since Sir Ferguson's left I don't think we've had a major you know we don't have we've never had a, a sustained um, period of success we've never had a consistent run you know out of playing good football or just being a team that was winning things it's never happened um, post Sir Ferguson so clearly the proof's in the pudding so if that's the case I think all of us should be able to deduce that even if we even if you don't agree with that um, you know 
I don't think ever, all of our ma previous managers were that terrible. I just think it's a combination of them maybe not being the right choice and also having owners who clearly don't care about the footballing side of things as much as probably the fans and other people would do who come into the job new. So again, the only way we can kind of see success is I feel like maybe we stumble across, you know, the next Sergs Ferguson or something or the next club or the next Guardiola, which obviously isn't likely. And there also isn't a guarantee that that person would want to come to United, right? Maybe you want to go to another a club a smaller one a more regional one wherever it may be so all these things are hypotheticals but i just wish that there was a solution now that would appease everybody and that would i would say guarantee but that would at least get us some way along the journey in terms of maybe getting us back to where we should be right i don't think there is though because the risk involved in signing a new manager and then thinking that's going to do everything is really high the risk of keeping erickson hogg in the job even though he's absolutely stinking the place out and he's clearly um in over his head is very high um especially when you consider all the turmoil and the stress confusion and the drama that's going on behind the scene in the dressing room it's looking really nuts because there's been reports coming out recently about certain you know individuals in the dressing room not bringing you to happy with how strict erickson hog is and all this malarkey and to be honest it's not real surprise i don't think anybody with any common sense would have not seen this because i think you can do that whole strict thing as a manager but it only really works that whole disciplinarian that whole being cold or leaving players out thing only works when you're winning if you're not winning games and suddenly the players that you're leaving out in a lurch, especially if they're like locker room favourites, right? They're like very popular within a group of players. It can be very detrimental to the overall mood of the team. So I think Eric Ten Hag, for me, I feel like he underrated or didn't really maybe keep that in consideration when he maybe banished Sancho and a few other players. And even the Maguire thing, if you think about it. As much as I don't like Maguire, but that Maguire situation was very odd. He essentially came in, stripped Maguire of his captaincy, made him the sixth, fifth or whatever set choice centre back, then went to sell him in the summer, but there was no bids. Then he comes back into the team and, you know, he, he, he's meant to pretend everything's okay. I'm sure Maguire has his own fa fans and friends in the dressing room who probably weren't too keen with that either. They're like, okay, we understand football wise, you want to strip him of the captaincy, but this treatment is a bit odd, the catalogue of things that's going on, especially when you read the rumours or the stories that were happening about Jay and Sancho essentially being bashed, banished away from the team and the treatment that he's receiving, you know, having to eat his food in the in the dorms of all the youth players and stuff. It's absolutely heinous. So I'm not surprised to see there's a lot of mess around his name. And I think for me, the greatest issue with Eric Ten Hag has always been the style of play. I think I was one of those people that believed that he was going to come to United and play the Ajax way or a version of the Ajax way. But clearly that wasn't a mandate. Clearly the mandate was maybe to win trophies, maybe to finish in the top four, because he's not really tried to have us playing attractive football, really. Apart from that one half or that one game, sorry, against Crystal Palace, actually, um, in the League Cup. I think that was only one time we actually saw United actually play some sort of level of coherent you know entertaining football apart from that it's been absolutely drab so maybe that is was the case but i just wish that things would have changed in that direction i think many of fans would have given him more time if we had you know better football to watch but the fact that the football is dire the signings are terrible the results aren't going our way it just makes it a lot easier to just you know to just say, hey, sack him and get someone else in you that can play that side of the play. But again, I just think with these owners, there's just no way you can kind of win. You know, they have too much control. They meddle too much. Um, there's no, you know, plan for sporting success in the first place anyway. So it's a bit of a shit show to be completely honest. It's honestly, honestly a bit of a shit show. But again, I cannot be surprised when it comes to United. I cannot be surprised when it comes to United. So moving on from this, Let's talk about some stuff on here that I've seen on the old interweb. So, um, most of you will know that Phoebe Philo made her triumphant return back to fashion after many, many years out of the limelight and whatnot. And for me at the time when it was announced she was going to come back, I was actually surprised that, um, LVMH didn't make much more of a stink about having her basically, you know, helm one of her, one of their luxury brands and whatnot. But I guess the relationship that they've got has kind of, you know, is, is from way back as well. And I guess this is one way to keep 
Phoebe Fowler kind of close to themselves by having a minority stake in her namesake label. Um, even though you'd imagine, you know, for the the stuff that she's really been able to produce with her namesake label so far, that they want to maybe pump out more stuff for other brands with her kind of direction. Because I think what she's proved with her return is that Phoebe Fowler definitely is that girl. She is him, as I've mentioned before, social media. She definitely is you know above a car above the rest and i think it was a really good reminder because she's been out of fashion for so long it was great to see her just not miss a step and be able to just get it from day dot so i picked out some of my favorite looks from the collections and as you can see here from the title it says the a1 collection so from what i've kind of led be led to understand from various articles i've been reading online about it um the collection that phoebe fellows now doing with her namesake label will have no fashion shows it will not be in any other retailer will be direct to consumer via their online stores which i'm really shocked it's become such a big deal in fashion it's something that's always kind of existed in the street world and any other bit of kind of commerce and retail but for some reason fashion people still seem to make such a big deal out of like direct to consumer models and shit but essentially what Phoebe Fowler is doing is she's going to be dropping I think two collections no three collections a year I think A1, A2, A3 and then there's going to be drops in each of those collections no in, yeah a drop in each of those kind of collection of things that are going to be happening if I'm not mistaken let me just double check here I think I saw it be the Financial Times article here. Yeah, it says, yeah, so um, it says here that um, Philo has kept quantity small, purportedly to limit the label's environmental impact, but probably also to whip up the hype. Of the 150 styles that she's designed thus far, no more than 100 each have been produced on average. They'll be released across three edits. So it's actually edits, A1, A2, A3. In the coming months, A2 will drop in spring. So we're seeing these little bits and bobs coming out. But again, like I said, no different than you have a streetwear brand. But... I'd have to pick out some of my favorite bits and bobs that I really liked. So number one image is probably the first image you're going to see if you scan through the lookbook on their main website, which is phoebephilo.com. Um, um, you can find the link probably in the description. I'm going to add it in later. But this first look in terms of a lifestyle image is absolutely fantastic. I'm not sure who the photographer was for this campaign or for this kind of initial kind of lookbook for her collection. But I love just the shapes from the, from the cut of the bob and the fringe to the cut of the jacket to the cut of the trousers. It's all done very 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 well and again i think this picture kind of does really well to kind of set the tone for the entire collection in terms of how chic and how modern and how on point it is because that's one thing as well you can never kind of you know um doubt um what's her face Phoebe Fowler on when it comes to the imagery when it comes to the taste level when it comes to the aesthetics of the clothes you know she always does a really good job with them i think of you know i can't think of many Phoebe Fowler campaigns or editorials that kind of or no so, yeah, Phoebe Fowler designed clothes that were featured in editorials that look shit or even their campaigns it doesn't happen so I like that first of all um I think these back zip trousers will be incredibly popular I'm not really too sure why functionality function functional wise why they will be popular but I guess just in terms of a bit of sensuality a little bit of um dynamism and whatnot these will make some sort of sense these trousers with just these massive um um, zips that go right from the bottom all the way up to the top so if you need be you could wear some you know different color panties and stuff to show them off and stuff whatever but i expect these trousers to be incredibly popular when they do originally launched um i love a lot of these kind of leather pieces especially the ones that are cut the way that they are here again you've got this nice cinch on the waist and how it kind of pops out there along the bottom and it's sort of like bell bottom type of style and again you would imagine like us like, you know most people would say with few follow she's definitely the greatest mum designer of all time and this all does look like stuff that your mum uh you know a really trendy yummy mummy would kind of be into because it allows you to be somewhat practical but also feel a bit chic and a bit cute as well especially when you think of that cinch there in the middle um one of my favorite pieces or looks actually is this look that features this lady that kind of looks like little sims so big up phoebe follow for beating races and rumors by you know featuring her in there but essentially what you got from this look is you got this incredible m65 type of jacket featured here but it's made in this really it's cut in this really amazing relaxed type of style i'm not just sure what the material is but it looks really light and fresh and you've got this really nice kind of funnel thing that going on on the top and this feels like a bit of a signature on Phoebe Philo design clothes where she's got this sort of like elongated exaggerated sort of like funnel type of thing um that you kind of that will help you to kind of go over your face if need be to if you're a bit cold and whatnot it sort of doubles up as a sort of like a face shield type of scarf type of thing whatever i really like that as to i actually like this really um big 
what looks like a money clip that's been turned into a some sort of clip that you can put on your clothes or whatnot for extra bit of detail and styling tips so i'm a big fan of those um and then of course some of the lifestyle images are really well done and really well shot um i look in i'd love to know who the photographer was for these because they look really amazing i love this sort of um you know crazy jacket as well i'm not too sure what the materials are in terms of what it's made of actually i'm maybe going to check on the actual online store let's see if it loads up here because most of the stuff is sold out which is absolutely wild when you consider some of the prices but then again you consider all the hype around phoebe philo and the fact that people have been kind of waiting with baiting breath um for her to kind of drop um it's no surprise that most of it is kind of gone flying out of the shelves the the, the mum bracelets and the mum necklace is completely gone which is wild because if i'm not mistaken it's sterling silver as well <laughs> with gold coating which is kind of crazy but it shows the power that she has you have an uh, xl cabas bag i'm trying to see where that big fairy number is it might be the piece actually that was priced on um you know pressed pressed on fucking availability or something poa i remember that was one jacket that you had to kind of email them to find out what the price is so that might be it anyway let's go back to the thing um that's a really cool jacket i think these old fashion guys are going to be into it i really like this look as well do this like i wouldn't call i'm not sure if you'd call this a tunic i think it is but again i think this is a classic phoebe philo um design shape i think like, i've seen her design tunics or tunics to this type of shape and this sort of dimensions or proportions sorry when she was at selena maybe a bit with chloe as well i love this because it's really again really chic really relaxed easy to wear but there is a element of sensuality in it too in terms of what you want to wear it as if you're a yummy mummy that still wants to step out and look amazing and then of course we've got these pester resistance trousers which i think are the same material as a the coat there above so if you want to go completely all fur you probably could if you wanted to but this is also i think i remember reading on an article i think it was the cut um interview or cut review courtesy of kathy horn and she mentioned how when she went to do the press um kind of preview for the new phoebe philo collection they were told under no certain terms that they couldn't speak about the collection the phones were locked away um and obviously after the embargo was lifted they could talk when the collection actually dropped and i think she mentioned part of the reason why they were so secret you know secrets um secretive about everything was obviously to build a hype but mostly it was an issue of they didn't want anything to be copied they didn't want to have leaks of every year's collection and then have it kind of pop up all over a Taobao or fucking, you know, whatever else place that exists out there. Um, and then again, nice shapes here on this other outfit too. I love some of the little detailing bits and bobs here with the, I think that looks like a ring or the end of a clip or something, which is sure. But that looks really great. One of my favorite looks. Um, the mum necklace is a really funny look because this looks like this could be a boy. I'm not too sure if it is. But again, a nice little hit and nice little styling hit. Very well done there i'm a big fan of dario waboe um this model here who's been out the limelight for a while but i think she came back with i think i'm gonna say gucci recently she came back but i remember her mostly because that was some of my formative years reading like early magazines of like you know vogue paris when emmanuela old and before that karen roy Feld was editor-in-chief over there and then some of their models that you know some of their go-to models were people like dario waboe because she was just always looked immensely cool in clothes it's another good example of it uh, that just looks really good in terms of the shirt and the bag just chilling and having a good time i think that bag is actually sold out as well right the one with the, the three different compartments i'm pretty sure that one sold out too i also I'm, I'm a fan of this sequin looking top if i'm not mistaken on the website it describes itself as a long t-shirt so i love the fact that that's the case because then it also reminds me of free um fucking young fuck because that's something that he mentioned also when he was asked about wearing that kind of leopard famous leopard print dress that he wore that time again a big fan of the proportions and the cuts and the shapes and stuff um these glasses look crazy good and these are also another item that I sold out if i'm not mistaken checking the actual phoebe file the website itself i'm sure i saw it there we go yep there's glasses there i think they call the peak sunglasses they're unfortunately sold out but they look really really hard man that's a good pair of sunglasses i'm surprised these definitely flew off the shelf the angular kind of like cat eye look to these glasses look really really great so you can move on to that one and also i'm not a fat i'm not i don't mind these crystal type of earrings as well they look fairly decent you've got a nice big tote bag there 
and again i like this money clip type of um, accessory that clips onto the outside the pocket there or anywhere else i'm assuming and then of course one of my favorite looks on the entire collection is this mostly because of the bob and the cut but also because of how everything sits on the body you got some angles here a couple of angles there as with the bag and then you got this amazing image amazing amazing image um, again, the big fur number we got going on there. I'm not sure what the earrings are saying there, but I'm a big fan of those. And then we got some of the looks towards the end of the lookbook, which is this one, which kind of reminds me a little bit of Katie Holmes. Um, and then we've also got another image here of Dara Wabo as well, looking internally cool. And one of my favorite jackets too, which is this really strange. It almost felt like this is, might be one of those leather flips of the same jacket that he already featured before. I'm not sure that's the case, but anyway, whatever. It does look like a really nice, um, field jacket that's been made in leather. And you've got this really nice cinch here on the waist that kind of helps accentuate the hips and makes it look a little bit, you know, less masculine than maybe it would do if it was made just like a typical old vintage shop kind of leather bomber jacket. So yeah, big up Philippe Fella for this. Um, I'm not surprised that most of the stuff is selling out. The reviews are, go are glowing. Everybody's flipping, you know, queuing up to fucking suck a dick. But again, it's no surprise because I think the, the, the thing that you realize straight away when you see the collection is just how vast it is it's crazy how much stuff is included in that collection that like she went absolutely crazy but it also makes sense considering how much time she's been away and the fact that her taste levels have still been the same but she's got different needs and what she wants to see on the wrong way bloody blah 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 so we probably won't hear much from her because she's notoriously quite press shy especially after all the you know iman coming out and saying what she said the legendary model i'm pretty sure she's going to want to avoid any kind of real conversations about real issues in with terms of race inclusivity and diversity in fashion and shit but if it just means she's going to be putting out collection after collection i'm here for it because i would love to see more imagery maybe we will get maybe a sneaky interview with her with somebody else one time who knows but i'm curious to see how it kind of evolves because i love the idea of it just basically being state wardrobe staples and i think that's something that they don't really consider a lot in fashion because everything's so like you know fashion with a capital f and there's lots of trends attached to it and all this malarkey when i like sometimes yeah to just be that's probably why i fell in love so much with demna and vetamon when i first started because it's in a name do you know what i mean vetamon is basically clothes like in the business of making clothes and you can extend that saying the business of making clothes for my fans you know for my supporters all that stuff is super important so um big up them for being able to do that big up them for being able to do that phoebe philo to the world and back again and i actually do love the squares design of the online store where when things are in stock they've got the natural light when they're not they're all gone in red so i'm assuming soon you'll be able to scroll down this list of items to just see it all completely red which would be absolutely incredible when you consider everything that's going on in the world right now but yeah big up um big up phoebe philo big up phoebe philo one time big up phoebe philo one time Oh yeah, and a quick one too. I just got um YouTube Premium. I've just been using it recently the last few days and I have to say it's absolutely awesome, man. I'm not going to lie. It's really, really good. I wonder why us as humans, we tend to not do things like that, like pay for services that we use quite often, like the, you know, the level above the premium service that gives you all the other um, features you probably don't really um, have the option to if you're using the free one. Because I'm not sure about you guys, but I spend quite a lot of time just like listening to YouTube videos in the background. Like I'll just have them on playing or I'll watch like a, or if anything, what I'll usually do, I see my habits is like, I might start a video. Like if it's a video about some sort of scam or something, right? Um, like a CoffeeZilla video, I may start the video on my phone and then I'll have it obviously listed in my history. So then later on in the day, if I want to watch the, the, like the second half of it, I'll just put it up on my laptop because I'm, I'll get annoyed at all the ads and stuff. But I still do put up with the ads i uh, maybe will just lower the volume or just let them play whatever it may be but i do spend a lot of time kind of watching youtube clips on my actual phone which is quite weird um because i've got a computer i don't know why i actually do that but it's just a kind of a habit i'm kind of into at the moment so i have really enjoyed using the youtube premium app at the moment um it's not 15 pound anymore last time i checked it was like 12.99 so it's pretty decent you get a month free and then it's 12.99 after the fact and of course the major thing about it is that you get no ads so there's no need to put an ad blocker on your 
another thing um or no need to have an ad blocker for youtube to use it and then the other thing that's really really beneficial is the fact that you can listen to stuff in the background so you can basically play a youtube video like a podcast so it does kind of lead to me thinking it's going to increase my usage of watching youtube videos and stuff so i've been really enjoying it so far and again i think for me it's just another reminder as was the session at Paris studios the other day that i should be doing more things i actually enjoy doing day to day you know instead of just doing things um no i should spend more money on the things that i enjoy that's what i actually mean yeah spend more money on things that you enjoy even if it's a nominal amount of money because 12.99 isn't really a much when you think about the grand scheme of things that you kind of enjoy on a monthly basis and if you can't find 12.99 to pay for premium then most likely you have other issues that you have to probably focus on which is a definitely okay but because i don't kind of pay for i think the only streaming service i pay for at the moment is uh netflix i took away my bt sports so i don't really have any other like streaming platform that i kind of pay for so it's not too bad that i'm paying for netflix and only youtube premium i think those are the two things that i kind of cover most of my basis so i'm really 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 happy about that oh and then of course i also pay for what's you call it uh, amazon prime and amazon prime comes with um amazon video which is quite good i think they'll probably change it soon because i think amazon video isn't it's not the best selection but it is quite decent um i know that invincibles is out now at the moment so i'm going to be checking it out soon i think season two is out already so if you're a fan of invincibles definitely make sure you check that out but so far um i'm getting some really good value for money from having youtube premium and i haven't i'm kind of ashamed i didn't get it before especially considering that i record content and do whatever stuff me needs be it's probably handy to have that as well to be used because now especially i think if most of you guys know that youtube is now trialing a new anti ad block system um they've got this thing in place now where if you try and watch videos with a black with an ad block on it basically tells you you can't i think you get the first time i think they let you watch like free or something and then after the fact you get a warning or it just won't load so now you have to either i guess either try and find an ad block that works now around the new kind of restrictions or do like i do and just buy premium so i'm sure youtube have seen an influx of people um signing up to youtube premium now because they've implemented this um ad block thing and i'm sure even for us actually content creators i'm sure we'll probably see a little bit of a bump in maybe some adsense money and stuff because people will now be forced to watch the ads maybe that'll be a thing going forward i'm not really too sure i've always been surprised why um youtube don't have the same thing that twitch had with like amazon prime i know they don't have a obviously a link no they, they should do it because it's google yeah because I, I remember back in the day twitch i think they still have it now there's like an amazon prime thing that's why a lot of people on twitch would get so many subs and stuff because it was tied to amazon i'm not too sure how it works or whatever but i was surprised that that's not a thing that happens with um youtube and youtube premium that'd be a great way to sort of like have that kind of work let me actually check this out and see what that means um, let me see if i can do it let's just twitch amazon prime um yeah amazon prime sub so how does that work what is that all about uh, so i said that i think it says here let me see um you can what what's that you can switch to prime subscription at any time um yeah let's see this can you sub to amazon prime or twitch to subscribe with to subscribe with prime with prime gaming you have a channel subscription that you can be used as a part of affiliate of a channel the host and no cost click the subscribe button do you have one free da, 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 da. How, how does it what's the, how does it work how does it work let's see what they say here because i'm curious i should see yeah I'm, so prime gaming it says here's a premium experience on twitch that's included with amazon prime the prime video membership the prime gaming includes bonus games and exclusive in-game content and channel subscriptions every month at no additional cost can be used as any partner or affiliate channel exclusive emotes and chat badges so yeah it's something that they have in line there with twitch and amazon prime so i would love to see they do the same thing with the uh, with youtube premium with content creators or going forward maybe it would um you know lead to an influx of people signing up to youtube premium you never bloody know you never bloody know Next on the list here, I quickly want to mention um, news here regarding Cortez. Um, I have to be honest, um, I've been liking what Cortez, Cortez has been doing for a while now. Um, I've really liked the flipping uptick in quality i feel like um the last few years i feel like maybe the sales have gone crazy good and instead of some brands just churning out the same nonsense again i feel like the um, Cortez team have basically invested every single penny for me anyway from the outside it looks like they invested every single penny that they've made in selling t-shirts doing all these you know mystery drops and stuff flash sales whatever it may be and they've invested it back into the product because number one the imagery the imagery has improved tenfold the styling has improved in the shoots the lookbooks the models they're casting and fundamentally the clothing the pieces themselves look so much better than they did
did maybe a couple of years ago and it's so cool to see that evolution i think that's always been one of the best things about being a fan of a streetwear brand is that you start buying a brand in streetwear when it kind of in this is in its infancy and then along the way um especially when you're young you basically get to grow up with the brand the brand even kind of evolves and starts making more quote unquote mature pieces um the quality increases they start opening stores they maybe start um having new customers and shit or maybe you even start kind of hanging out and get to the people behind the scenes but regardless you get to see it go from being a t-shirt brand and then kind of building itself up into like a fully fledged collection with quote unquote cut and sew and all this malarkey people kind of know and love and this is a good example of it with some of the pieces that are coming up in their new drop that they're about to have um in the next couple of days and one of the things i love the best is this jacket um it's um it reminds me i forgot the name of the jacket but there was a particular jacket in new york that used to get boosted all the time that supreme make a version of it as well um it's really big it's really padded parker um it's got loads of down filling inside it i think the supreme might have like 700 down inside of it and stuff and they've made different variations of it over the years and um cortez have basically made their version of it in this lovely bone ivory off-white type of colorway and it's absolutely beautiful looking um you can see at the front here it's got loads of kind of zip compartments so be at the front chest pocket so maybe you can put your hands in the chest there which i've always been a fan of great big pockets in the front um nice big velcro straps as well and it just looks fucking warm as hell but if i had one slight criticism about this parka would just be the logo at the back um i've never been super fond of the Cortez logo um the alcatraz logo thing personally myself it's never been super fond of it but i do like this attempt to make it um you know somewhat tonal it looks like because the sky's shadow is behind it so i think the logo itself is white so the, if the jacket itself is off white then the logo is white so it doesn't show up too much i'm not really the biggest fan of like um big back logos on jackets personally i much prefer the little you know cortez side you know little script they got here in the front as opposed to the big brand logo in the back but again this is just me being a bit of a nitpicky asshole um the leather jackets they make are really great um i kind of get a lot of like old school avrex and i forgot what the 80s brand was but there's a particular 80s brand that they used to make i think it might be members only or something but i think a lot of courty leather jackets or these sort of shapes kind of remind me of those sort of like leather jackets from the 80s and stuff so they do a really good job of those and one of courty's is like kind of you know um, bread and butter the thing that they absolutely smash out of the park for me are their track suits like also or, or their suits right their top and bottoms they're always always fantastic and this is a really good example of it you've got the alcatraz logo and it's sort of like um repeated all over this um olive green denim jeans sort of set up and again this kind of gives me dip set diplomatic type of vibes of course because it's filmed in it looks like the pictures are taken in new york anyway but it definitely gives me that sort of feeling um nice and baggy fit um the jacket fits just right and it just looks great you know what i mean like with a nice white crisp white t-shirt underneath like this model's wearing or just with a basic black t-shirt this model's wearing here and i think they've got on tims as well so it's very very apt and very on point considering where they're at and where it's been filmed and another cool, cool addition i'm not gonna lie is this this logo because i'm not really a as much as i don't like the cortez alcatraz logo i'm also not the biggest fan of the script to be honest you know that's the weird thing like that's why i've that's why i know i like the brand because i don't like the how the logo is kind of like splayed out but i'm also appreciating from the graphic design point of view how they've been able to work the c because the C is starting to look like a thing now. I'm starting to get, my eyes are starting to get used to it and it's starting to look like a thing. It looks fucking fantastic. I'm not too sure if this is mohair, this jumper, but essentially it's a nice um, knitwear sweater and you've got the big C here in that kind of yellowy, I don't know if it's a yellow, it's an off-white kind of colorway with a star at the end of it. It looks really fucking fantastic. I've got to be honest. And I think I'm at a point now because I'm never going to wear Palace, right? Because, you know, I think the fucking founders are cunts. So I'd prefer to spend my money to, with another UK brand. If I was going to buy another UK brand to support, I think Cortez would definitely be the one that I would definitely be checking out because they've got some really, really cool shit out there. Um, so this is a tweet courtesy of their account. It says their store's going to open on Friday the 7th, London time, 20 plus new products, um, worldwide shipping available, ships within 10 to 15 working days, sign up on Cortez. Um, so sign up on CRTZ.XYZ, early password access via our Twitter tomorrow, rules 
Tools of the World. Um, and obviously pictures by Chris Curran. So absolutely incredible pictures. Love where you think about it. Of course, you know about the random drops. Like this is standard for streetwear. I think the fashion people are f freaking out with Phoebe Philo. Oh my God, she's dropping random edits. She's dropping edits throughout the, throughout the year. No seasonal stuff, no runway. This is standard for streetwear. And if what this allows... It allows brands um, that are small, brands that are still beginning, brands that are in the infancy, brands that are kind of building to slowly but surely develop. It allows you time to, you know, have a spark of inspiration. It allows time for your customers to save up some money. It just allows time for you to make cool, interesting things throughout the year. And you can drop them when you need to drop them. And if you've got a big jacket that you want to sell, you can sell it obviously closer to the winter. And then obviously if you've got shorts and t-shirts, you can sell that in the summer. But you don't need to do this stupid seasonal stuff and collections on certain dates when everyone else is doing them you can just drop two times in a year um different you know two main collections in in a year and then kind of have little things in between there like collabs and stuff going on so this is no surprise if you're a streetwear head you know i'll go on with this but again like i said i think cortez have been doing amazing work this is another um bigger picture of the actual jacket that they've got selling what well, is going to come out soon it's actually gore-tex as well i didn't know that oof this looks beefy like you can just tell from the picture itself right um the jacket is like it's it's a substantial piece you know like the the, the shape of it is absolutely incredible too actually you've got this nice sort of like arch which kind of looks like an n right and it carries that shape all the way around so that's how you know it's been cut really well you've got the inside here it's got that big n and then of course you've got it here around the edges of the shoulders too it looks really fucking good um if it was me again nitpicky i'd like this logo to be tonal too if the back logo is white tonal i'd like the front one to be tonal then maybe you can have the little um logo or branding here on the wrist to be different but i do like how it looks man it looks absolutely fantastic look at that i think it's probably going to be waterproof as well um nice big collar funnel collar too so you can kind of hide your face behind it and sort of use it like a de facto scarf um and i also like the kind of champagne brown type of lining on the inside also i'm a big fan of it i wonder if it's going to come in different colors i doubt it but and i also i'm curious to know why they picked this colorway it's an interesting one to pick in it like this white puffer because um you'd imagine it'd get dirty really quickly or whatever who cares but i wonder why oh it's not it's actually, actually not gore-tex okay i thought the logo the logo kind of looked like a gore-tex logo maybe that was um done on purpose it says bolo big um on the logo there and of course you've got those little um cortese and signal on the inside as well all the stuff is really cool as a as a customer to purchase but i'm assuming a lot of this is also done to like you know to avoid um counterfeits and shit because all this stuff is a lot harder and maybe costs a lot more money to kind of do and they always do all over print um tonal logos on the inside there but yeah it looks absolutely fantastic i'm a big fan of it i love that jacket and um, we've got some other bits in here too i want to quickly check out oh, and again and um, this is their collection throughout earlier the year just to kind of show you that i've been um you know liking what they've been doing recently and i think for me something that i'm kind of gutted i missed out on is this tracksuit this olive green um it kind of looks like an army um, material type of um, tracksuit jacket thing going on it's so hard i'm so pissed off i didn't get this when it dropped um so you've got this kind of like an anorak um half quarter zip um jacket i wouldn't say it's half zip so it's a quarter zip jacket you've got these really big pockets it kind of if anything reminds me of like head porter i remember porter had like a collection similar to this where they had these anorak type jackets and pants with pockets all over them if anything i think the, the head porter one had the same pockets on the on the jacket on as on the pants which this is a bit different so you've got this big massive pockets here at the, at the at the front on the chest you've got two different types of logos one with the badge one with the screen printing you've got the slip pockets on the side you've got these nice pockets here on the way and then of course the, what i've always liked about Cortez is the shape of the pants they're neither too flared or they're too baggy they're just about right and then you've also got the addition of this cool little strap on the side um where you can kind of adjust the the what you call it the hole um at the bottom of your pants as well but yeah very 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 well done this is one of my favorite pieces they've ever put out to be fair i'm not gonna lie i absolutely adore it and of course the lookbook pictures imagery itself looks absolutely fantastic i'm not really too bothered about the polo zip thing going on there but again just really nice pictures very well done um i love the prison pants they look really cool too in the orange maybe ties in with the alcatraz cortez logo and they've also had gloves as well in the past i look really good i'm assuming would we'll double up as good um calisthenic type of things going on there as well um 
And actually, you know what's actually good about Cortez? I'm just thinking about it. I don't really know them or think of them as a t-shirt brand, you know? I think of them as like making actual pizzas. That's actually a really impressive part of what they've been able to do over the years. You don't actually think of them as like just making t-shirts. Um, they make far more than that. And then, of course, one of the other things that I really liked about what they did was this varsity jacket they put out earlier. Because... I don't know what it was about the varsity jacket, but it looks very London, if that's possible. I don't know it's because of the branding at the bottom of the jacket that's kind of, you know, making me go crazy. But I love that the varsity jacket looks like a brand from the UK making their own version of the varsity jacket as opposed to trying to co-opt American culture and come off a bit beggy. I'm not sure if that makes any sense, but there's been a lot of brands I've seen in the UK who've co-opted that kind of American um, style. Um, I think even Clint is a, is a big, um, is a big, um, victim of doing that sort of stuff although i like some of the clint stuff some of the stuff can look a little bit too much like wannabe from la wannabe from new york was i think like cortis do a good job of sort of taking americana streetwear menswear staple items and then giving them a twist a uk twist and i think that's what we always grew up with in the uk um no one really obviously there was a few african uncles out there that were trying to dress like, like they were from the states right from the states but for the most part we all just took what we saw with these guys on tv on music videos and kind of made it our own do you know what i mean that's a really i always think of that that legendary um top of the pops performance with um what you call it with more fire crew when they all decked head to toe in iceberg history that was a particular um very uk expression but then also a kind of flip on what we we're seeing some of our us counterparts doing but doing it in a sort of european sort of like lens so i do like the fact that they had this um jacket in the way that it did um you've got this amazing um ball uh british what, 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 ball i'm not sure you go british bulldog but i feel like this ball with the horns is somewhat of a uk insignia there's something very uk-ish about this and how it's written on there and i love the stars in between all the letters down on the, on the end as well um rules the world in between is absolutely incredible and the numbers in the front too but i'm, I'm assuming it did really well because it sold out pretty quickly i'm assuming and then the same with the mohair um you've got some nice pants here in the back and again the models the casting the posing everything just looks so good man you want to you just want to wear everything in this collection um another great tracksuit um not really again not too fond of the logo itself personally if it was me um i love that the, the, they're wearing the nocta drake slides again uh, i think the slides whatever the shoes are called um they look really good there in that collection and then you've got a really good picture here with this nice little crop top with the logo on it too so yeah big up cool tees do always do incredible and great things a uh, big fan of the brand love how they're growing and again another cool imagery lookbooks after they put on this this Subaru Impreza tracksuit might be one of their best ever to be fair um really really well done um this amazing another amazing what's this this is like a pinstripe denim suit is that pinstripe no it's not pinstripe but it looks close to it that's fucking fire in it that looks so good bro like honestly Cortez do some really really good work I have to be honest they, they might be my favorite brand from the UK hands down if you're not gonna wear it you know Palace is fucking dud done out here and it's very very caucasian anyway or a certain type of you know urban individual would be wearing palace you know those labrook grove mandem that rolled up their own cigarettes and wear loafers with tracksuit bottoms and shit allow that but if you're on something a little bit different and supporting someone that's actually doing some good work and seems pretty chill i think this is a good option so yeah big up Cortez, and actually to end it let's play their ad they just put out this really cool advert um randomly i'm not too sure even what the point was of this to be honest um it just kind of dropped randomly and they put this ad out and it looks fucking incredible i'm not going to lie i think actually it might be to promote the parker i take it back i think it might be to promote this parker if i'm not mistaken i think the model is wearing this parker here right this um this um, big off-white parker that's going to be coming out soon uh, i think that's what it was kind of done to promote if i'm not mistaken so let's play this and then of course we'll move on and who's it directed by so let me just give that person credit it's directed by a person called walid labri so big up walid labri big up cool tees always doing some cool interesting things let's play this advert right now This is UK heritage, by the way, right? Coffee shops, right? Breakfast spots, cafes, CAFs, as we like to call them here in the UK. This is British heritage. And I love that um, CAFs, especially in ends, are like um, the sort of like 
they're basically a better meeting ground of all different types of cultures than going to the pub. Pubs are usually very, very mundele, right? There's loads of whites over there, but I feel like cafes are usually a better place to get a real reflection of what your area is like in general. And, you know, some cafes are made better than others, but mostly you go there for a fucking greasy fry up, a ham sandwich, a jacket potato, some lasagna sometimes, right? It can happen to lasagna with fries is a very um, UK way of eating lasagna, but I love how cafes are like the staple of some communities and they've basically turned into the de facto community centers that we all know and love. Let's continue with the video. <laughs> some guy peeking through the window. <laughs> Boom. Bolo is big IG. <laughs> That's pretty cool, isn't it? It's pretty cool. So yeah, big up Cortez doing excellent work there. Big up Cortez doing absolutely excellent, excellent, excellent undisputed great work moving on to people doing great and undisputed great work we've got Stussy's holiday 2023 lookbook also we're a bit heavy with the streetwear today um we've got a collection here that is of course just standard greats from Stussy to be honest um let's just read a bit of the blurb here it says for this holiday season Stussy presents a versatile collection that blends technical textiles seasonal mainstays and cold weather essentials with its namesake patterns and recognizable iconography wrinkled nylon puffer jackets spray dyed canvas big old jeans and colorful knitwear are styled alongside mohair trench coats corduroy blazers and shirling bombers layering classic silhouettes with brands laid back staples available worldwide at select chapter stores from friday the third at 10 a.m so if you're listening to this today you should have probably seen um some of this stuff being available um for me as per usual it's just always on point the styling is fucking great i want every single fucking piece in this fucking collection i'm not going to lie the fleece is absolutely absolutely incredible love everything about it but my favorite piece my favorite piece has to be to one of these jackets this leather jacket is absolutely god god tier it's probably going to be a million bucks but this sort of like crinkled um aesthetic leather jacket oh i've also noticed they've got an, a double s belt buckle thing as well a belt with um, the double s on the inside insignia that's going to be a real popular sort of bit as well there people are going to get all over that one that was fucking great. I love that. Again, nice Polar Tech fleece. They, they do really good fleeces, I think, over the season. Um, I think there's probably no need to buy a North Face Denali. Uh, it probably, probably makes more sense to get one from like Brain Dead or again from Stussy because I feel like they do some really good fleeces season in, season out. Um, a nice leather bomber jacket with a hood there. The pants are flipping amazing. I also love the addition of these mountain boots that they have here. I'm sure they're probably a, a, a collaboration with Dine. I forgot what the, the name of the brand is. I think it's like Dynamite or Dinamia the Odini I've got how you pronounce it properly um I also love the fact that they have this orange bomber jacket I've got too many of these anyway but I do love when brands decide to sometimes flip the classic bomber jacket that's usually brown with the orange lining and have it with your orange lining on the outside um the color looks great the materials look like this might not be the the nylon type that you're used to it looks like a brushed or some sort of cotton it looks like maybe it's been instead I'm not too sure that's really great as well um 
um, I'm not sure if their shoes there are Dr. Martin's collab. I'm not really too sure on that one, but they look great. The double breasted jack, um, blazer jacket looks awesome. I'm not really fond of the styling on this though. I think the abundance of these big old jeans are a bit too much. I would probably wear these with a bit more slimmer cut of a jean, but I do like this double breasted, um, blazer thing. And of course, the script logo hat as well looks absolutely fire. Um, great jacket there. That real tree camo pants. They've been all over the place. I feel like this season, they've been one of the most popular things I've seen out here. Um, great again camo um, uh, print you got this girl wearing these big trousers with cowboy boots it looks like so I'm, not too, I'm not too mad at that to be fair it looks really good look oh, look at this this feels like what is what would you call that i think you'd call that a chesterfield maybe or maybe just a long coat that's been made in this really nice wool material it looks very very cozy and it's wrapped around on the waist with a belt that's a proper good jacket that's giving me adam kimmel vibes that's what i'm feeling with stussy these days whoever's designing for them i feel like it's giving me a lot of adam kimmel vibes if you know you know that looks really fantastic um and then my favorite piece is this this is the pest of resistance this jacket that this model's wearing in blue i think it's called a ripstop jacket i think i might have it here on on the dover street market site yep there you go it's a men's parachute ripstop down puffer in powder blue i'm definitely getting this for this season it's absolutely gorgeous look at that that, that might have to be my coat for this season i've got a couple already that i'm going to be pulling out for the colder weather like my vetema jacket that i've been um that i happen to get another one as well that i'm absolutely how happy about my parker but this might be my go-to day today i love the color that blue is so fucking beautiful i love the cinch at the bottom here um the silver um, zips are a really nice addition too they balance well with this jacket itself i'm not too sure if it has an inbuilt hood on the inside it may do it may not i'm not too sure i don't really that bother to be fair but it looks fucking great the shape of it is so good and then of course you've got this nice little um stussy hit there on the sleeve as it's been embroidered in it looks so fucking fantastic um it says here number five yk it's got a ykk metal zip uh, metal zip pockets adjustable shock cord um hem and a stussy basic stock logo on the left cuff 900 nylon and fills down with 10 percent feather so this is going to be super super warm um, and it's only 300 I think for a down jacket in that shape, it's pretty decent, to be fair. Um, it's probably cost less than a retail North Face, to be fair. Um, and obviously, you get the addition that it's not just a North Face. It's a little bit more cooler looking and stuff. So I love that jacket. That's one of my favorites. I think it also comes in black and I think another color. I think it's like a champagne brown. But to me, that sky blue. So that powder blue colorway is definitely the one for me. Um, you've got another long Chesterfield type jacket that looks really cool with a nice brown collar. Oh, look at the gloves. You've got leather driving gloves type of style with the S's on it. They look great. Oh, I'm all over them as well. That's definitely something I want to try and purchase. Those leather gloves look fucking great. Um, you've got this jacket, which looks like a bit like a field jacket in this nice camo blue type of color. I love that look actually with the suede or I think that's a corduroy um what you call it collar that works really well there i'm not really too mad at that also um you've got another puffer jacket another down jacket that looks more crinkled with the logos on the side again i love the logo patches on the sleeve i probably prefer those than having them on the chest i'm not going to lie when it comes to the jackets um and then again paired up with those same camo pants from that camo jacket up there at the top it looks really cool um again you've got the same i think same jacket kind of pattern I'm not too sure if it's been crinkled or if that's just like a pattern. I'm not too sure if the material is crinkled or pattern, but either way, I love it. Um, I love the basic black shorts with a little um, Stussy hit on the bottom there. I wonder if they we're going to get um, more of those in different colorways. I guess so. Um, a nice Stussy sport t-shirt. I love that logo. Love the color combination also. Oh, look at that big blue jacket with a Stussy sport at the back. Again, I'm not really big on the big logos and whatnot but there's something about that stussy script that i just absolutely adore um the fleece here looks absolutely great sort of like a chess piece um design with the little green um borders around the hexagonal brown bits and bobs on off-white color and um, the combat pants here look really nice here the cargo pants look really good there too and then you got this that's i think it's the same jacket i featured that i was talking about up, up top it's sort of like a field jacket you've got four pockets at the front and it's got this really nice kind of boxy shape to it so yeah i'm not mad at that um that same jacket you know, this is more like a chore jacket it feels like in a washed out blue with the same look same color um pants as well i love that this denim suit is absolutely brilliant oh i'm not mad at that denim suit in the slightest to be fair 
you've got that piling on the inside and you've got the double knee pants looks really awesome you got a mohair again i've seen a lot of this this season probably because of the, of the season loads of mohair fluffy jumper type of things you've got this nice powder blue one which looks great the the puffy blue jumper with the pants and the mary jane's a nice little bit of styling there i'm not gonna lie i'm not mad at that oh look at this knit that is lovely isn't it in that yellow that would look really good on me mate that color on black skin is fucking golden. It's got this nice yellow, almost looking like a weird mix between lime green and yellow. It looks really good. And it's sort of almost see-through with this nice um, S logo on the back. That looks brilliant. Um, you've got this good shadow played um, flannel, I think, shirt, probably maybe zipped. And then you've got a nice bomber jacket with some good cargoes, also good real tree camo pants there, a nice vest car cardigan oh i love that hoodie actually that hoodie is oh that look is me all all day long that look there is me with this orange um fluffy sweater vesting or sweat fluffy hoodie um sweater thing at the moment you know i'm getting so gassed i'm kind of losing my words here and also these nice camo pants this is like me all over i love this look this look is fucking brilliant and then yeah and then the start photography you got liam mcrae um styling landon ebling and models are jan andriana and landon so definitely check it out if you haven't already stucy's coming at you very very strong not sure if it's available yet to see the, all the prices yet let me see if the if the, if the website is open just yet no not open yet just yet Honda collection delivery will be available soon um but yeah it's not open just yet we can't see what the prices are going to be like at the moment unfortunately um it's a password entry type of thing but at least we have an idea on the collection of what it looks like i think if we actually go here to actually dover street market i think they'll actually tell us if i'm not mistaken let me see if i go back to dover street market i think they'll actually tell us if they've got any other new bits and pieces let's click on stucy and it'll probably show you other bits and pieces so yeah so i really got some prices for the men's chunky sweater that i mentioned before that's 185 the shirling work gear vest is 380 um the faded over shirt is 160 what else is here that i saw in the collection i think that's it really i don't see anything else that's, that was there before to be fair everything else looks kind of different oh i love the star logo that star that star pig dyed logo thing looks really great i love the look of that the s logo um letterman hoodie looks really awesome too that venus pigment dyed t-shirt here looks really great and yeah as per usual this is one of my favorites always consistent you can't really go wrong with stucy so definitely check them out if you haven't already please do check them out if you haven't already always a flipping great always amazing always interesting and all of that malarkey in between all of that malarkey in between and then we've also got a couple of other pieces i want to quickly mention here before i leave you guys bear with me a second i actually do like these actually this is courtesy of hype beast it's the black denim nike air max one 86s and essentially the 86 pairs of our air max ones are basically made more to spec to the original air max ones which were called nike air max 86s back in the day because of the year that they released and the uh, one thing that you'll notice about this remodel or this reworking or this reimagined pair is the fact that they now have this classic big window and the big window if i'm not mistaken the history about it was that when tinker hatfield designed these shoes they were originally designed with this massive big window this massive air bubble so essentially if i'm not mistaken the nike mx air bubble extends that size anyway but the window that nike put on them was mostly a thing to avoid um crackling and popping of the bubble so i think when the window was really big and exaggerated like if you look at older pairs of air max 95s and shit you'll see that they've got really big exaggerated air bubbles and i think they sort of like did did away with them because over time people would use them and the bubbles would burst or they'll kind of crumple and shit so they had to kind of you know lower the size of them and make them a little bit more smaller and kind of encase them a little bit more so that people's shoes wouldn't burst but i guess now they figured out a way to have this really big exaggerated window so you can see the whole entire um backside bit of the where the bubble that sits on the air max and you've got this really exaggerated crazy shape that looks absolutely incredible and on older pieces i remember um on vintage pairs of air max ones this material would actually be two different types of polyurethane so you get this nice sort of like dye and off-white type of yellowing going on on the midsole if you wore them a lot of the time so i love that they've kind of recreated that by having this it's just probably a print probably not even two pieces but i still like the little addition of detail and i was just saying that i think this colorway 
it's quite mediocre personally in my opinion i don't think it's that great but i think the shape is what sells it so that's why something i always said why i'm really annoyed that nike doesn't do more of these faithful reddits so these faithful retros where they take these legendary shoes and they try to remake them how they were made you know when they first released because what ends up happening is that the shape of the shoe is so appealing that it makes whatever colorway you put on this shoe look really cool don't get me wrong these kind of are giving a little bit sean Wotherspoon, right it's sort of like nike decided to take sean Wotherspoon's aesthetic and put it on a shoe a gr type of shoe because you've got this nice mix of different materials you've got denims going on here you've got levers um you've got that looks like might be a suede going on a new buck and maybe another material here on the front so it's a nice little mix of materials and obviously the hues and the palettes look very sean wotherspoon but i still think the colorway is not that great but the model itself is what sells it and i wish nike would decide to do more faithful retros of like air max lights of like structures um even just dunks the actual shape of dunks is that like fucking awful the ones that everyone's are usually buying they're fucking really really bad in my personal opinion i'd love to see dunks done and made more to spec to the old kind of really really um rectangular straight up kind of shape that they used to have before nowadays they're a little bit too banana -y. they're a little bit too flat they don't really have a lot of substance or substance behind them and they kind of feel a little bit wishy-washy so i do like the fact that they did these with these air maxes so these are going to due to be coming out soon let's see the other pictures of them actually and what they look like up close um looks like the bubble itself might be is that clear or is that a little bit of a green tinge there i don't know if it's green I don't know. it looks really nice though to be fair the bubble itself and then again you got all the mix of materials there um you got this nice black denim kind of way another black denim a, a black leather sort of mud guard with a crinkle effect you got this sort of like nubuck or suede on the toe box which is really interesting choice personally i would have gone with mesh if that was me because this would crease really easily but i still like the you know the little flip and then of course you've got a little nice little leather um tag as well here on the tongue so nice little addition as well but there's loads of bits here that will probably get crinkled and fucked up like this pink um inside of the shoe once you put your if, unless you know you're wearing new socks every time you wear the pair of shoes but if you repeat socks i've got a feeling this back collar bit would end up getting a bit smudged and dirty and i have a feeling this this toe box will get really crinkled very easily with this sort of like suede new buck toe box going on there so that might be something to keep an eye on if you're going to purchase them but they do look fucking beautiful though especially for the top down they look so nice with the pink laces i actually take it back i think the colorway is kind of hard i'm not gonna lie that colorway is kind of winning me over with the pink lining on the inside there and the pink laces that like, they look absolutely absolutely special i absolutely love these and then of course you've got the nice um logo design here at the back I, I, it would have been nice if it was all bejeweled but i guess maybe they can't do it with the letters but they got the letters embroidered they got nike in the air and then the actual swoosh itself is like a almost a bejeweled type of design if you know anything about your co.jp um air maxes and then of course yeah you got this nice look at this you got this nice raw um you know hem here or edge on the side where they cut the pattern for the mud guard it hasn't been sealed or anything which i always love and then yeah you got the addition of what looks like i feel oh, okay it's not if it's not corduroy it might be denim then or maybe it's corduroy this material here this pink material maybe it is corduroy and maybe this is corduroy also or is that denim i'm not too sure but either way good material choices i love it you got the leather you got the suede a new buck and you got whatever this is corduroy denim so you got three different materials here all in one really it looks really cool you cannot deny that and then what's the last picture here at the end you got a picture here on the back as well with the little um stumbled lever as well so big up them for that oh i think the the, the air bubble might be blue it might be a kind of a little blue type of tinge in there love that um let's read a bit of the blurb it says nike's air max line may be a decade old but it continues okay high piece article writing is so terrible let's skip all that bit then it finishes it says kicking off the new pair the upper begins with a textured leather mud guard and black that wraps around the shoe from there a rough blue suede base is accompanied with pink denim a signature black denim enters the mix with primary midfoot overlay and the heel canter the swooshes carry the light gray leather that contrasts with the denim supporting the sneakers and off-white midsole with a visible air unit is joined by a combination of pastel blues and pinks and rubble out so at the time of writing i guess not yet revealed any dates on the when it's going to be releasing the black denim color with the mx 186 stay tuned for updates so i sure i saw recently there was an 86 of the blue of like the classic kind of white with blue and i'm sure there's another one coming up soon but i do like this color i think this was absolutely fire love it so far no date when it's meant to be coming out but they're saying that it could retail for 170 dollars which is a bit steep
cheap but like i said before i would be willing to pay the extra bit of money for retros that get made faithfully um then pay whatever they were charging before for the banana fucking shaped nonsenses that they were putting out 170 for a faithful retro is definitely something that i'm really into especially if they do this new nice, interesting colorways this is a really fresh approach to doing colorways that they haven't done before especially with the air max you know there's no mesh here if i'm not mistaken the the Sean Wolverspoon Air Max One things eighty sevens. They didn't have a a mesh anywhere either. Did so maybe this was the inspiration for it. Because like I said, it does remind me a lot of the Sean Wolverspoon. What was it again? Is it Nike Air Max something? Right, Nike Air Max. Let's just put that in there. It kind of reminds me a little bit, yeah, of the what they called the one slash 97s right the mix between the 97s at the top and the MX one on the bottom. Like this colorway. Imagine with an eighty six air, air unit, how these would look. If they had this exaggerated, um, super big um, air bubble unit, right? That's where I got it. It's over there. Let's move this tab over here so you can see it. Bear with me a second. If I do that, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Imagine that air unit on a pair of Sean Weatherspoons. They would look so hard. So maybe there is a chance to do that. Maybe they might do <laughs> um, open up on Nike ID. It's probably unlikely. But this is, again, one of the best Nike models of all time, to be fair, collaboration-wise. Sean Weatherspoon absolutely snapped on these. But yeah, these didn't have any mesh bits on them at all, did they? From what I can tell here, there are no mesh bits on these shoes. It's just straight up corduroy or whatever material it is. Let me just get this StockX picture so I can see it in fucking its full HD potential. That's the pair there. Oh, that's a toddler pair. Is that a toddler pair, it says? Toddler. Okay, cool. I don't need that. I need the actual picture of the shoe. See if I can get it. There you go. I think that's the one there. Um, That picture there. Boom, boom, boom. Copy the address. Let's put that over here. Let's see what it looks like. But yeah, you've got... So on the Sean Wolver Spoons, you've got just a complete mix of corduroy everywhere. So from the green to the purple to the to the blues to the pinks to the greys to the yellow and this kind of brownie type of colorway so it's all it's all corduroy but yeah i would love to see that same level of potential give to that so i do like the shoe itself when it does come out you shall know when it does come out you shall know another one also we got this um regarding these dunks again i'm not really the biggest fan of dunks to be fair i'm kind of tired of sbs in general and i think the way that nike has forced dunks down our throats should be studied um i remember when i used to work for nike there was a i think it might have been the 35th anniversary of the dunk when i was working for no was it 35th i don't know what it what it was but when they put out those um dunks that had them um, that were based on american sports colleges or whatever college teams and shit and um, i remember that was the time that i was around and i think they were done in like a suede tap and finish and everyone was and everyone kind of didn't really didn't really care unless they were like you know limited edition sbs but nike have been really resilient they've been really kind of steadfast in pushing dunks they have never stopped i feel like they push dunks in terms of special collaborations and celebrations more than they push air force ones which is weird because i feel like air force ones are a far superior shoe in that kind of you know classic sort of like upper design and shit but wherever people seem to be loving dunks they seem to be going crazy for them and i think these might be another ones of the crazy ones because this is like a limited edition version of the panda dunk but it's kind of done a bit better it looks really cool so this is courtesy of hype beast this is a tight booth um, announces the launch party for its Nike Dunk Low that's meant to be coming out soon I've seen these all over the social medias um, I think it's a store based in Japan if I'm not mistaken or a brand and they've done this um, collaboration here with Nike on their SBs and they're essentially the Panda Dunk colorway if I'm not mistaken it is white and black right Panda Dunks I'm pretty sure I'm not mistaken I'm, I'm not mistaken it's not that black and white I think it's white and black right oh no it's black and white okay cool I got it wrong so it's a flip on the Panda Dunk colorway so on the mud guard um or on the or on the toe box is black and i guess on the panda duck is white so you got that flip of a colorway but i do like how they look anyway they look really cool especially with the addition of the little black midsole and the white outside i feel that helps to kind of break up the shoe if anything so yeah big up tight booth um let's actually scan through a couple of the pictures you got this really nice um almost grated serrated sort of like top design which kind of reminds me of like you know metal sheets and shit with the sort of like you know little lines on the outside of them and then you've also got the addition does it, does it looks like a graphite swoosh to you 
I don't think it's graphite. Maybe it's patent or leather. Not really too sure. But you've got this nice material on the outside with these nice little patterns with the white slashes. You've got a new buck or suede um, toe box. Again, this is probably great for skateboarding anyway because I'm sure these little lines will help with the abrasions. And the suede with skateboarding on grip tape is always a good addition. And then you've also got the white hit on the laces. You've got the dots on the tongue. A nice crisp white insole um, lining here as well. And then, like I said, I love the breakup. When you've got like a white base of a shoe, I love being able to break it up with this nice black um, midsole type of color and then having it combined with the white outsole. I think that looks really, really cool. And then, of course, you've got a really nice bright um, orange um, insoles there with tight booth SB as well written on the inside. And the back, you've got the black tab as well. And again, look at that suede. The combination with the suede and the leather. That is really nice. I really like that, to be fair. I'm not going to lie. That's a really good combo. And then you've got the tight booth logo on the tongue itself as well, which would be cool because I think... If I'm not mistaken, Dunk Low SBs, and also you've got this nice little tab, orange tab on the swoosh. If I'm not mistaken, Dunk Low SBs nowadays usually have elastic on the tongue, so you don't really need to lace them up anyway, especially if wear your size and whatever you can basically have them slot in so it'd be pretty cool to see people maybe wearing them laceless um so that you can just see the type of the tongue as well that might be a cool little flex and also you've got little type of hits on the end of the sneaker tips as well himself and a type of an sb on the insole there let's read a little bit of the blurb here courtesy of hypebeast um let's read the first update bloody how many updates have been there been jesus christ update 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 original story so japanese label type booth led by professional skateboarder um senpai unio okay it's a skateboarding brand then my bad i thought it was just a label itself a brand um so shin what's it about shinpai yun you know Yano has established itself across the world throughout recent years to accomplish this um the brand has teamed up with various collaborators such as bill blum um now it's continuous ascent with nike and nike sb previewing by Un unio himself the forthcoming release reinvents the sb dunk low upper pairing its texture with the materials of a unique arrangement first the base utilizes a hairy suede black offset with the off-white overlays with a scratch texture teaming up with the color matching lining a reflective oh it's a reflective black switch okay so it's probably 3m that's really nice so you can skate at night and it'll be lit up and stuff as of now no details are there obviously you've got the the owner himself there um shin pai showing a pair on instagram back in the day they look really cool um i like the orange lining on the inside of the tongue actually that's a nice little hit there and then if we scan up at the update um we'll see here some more pictures of, i think this is actually as the time was continuing on right in terms of developing the shoe itself you've got more images here of the shoe as we mentioned previously oh i love the little i love the little hit of the orange on this little nike sb logo or section of the outsole itself that looks really cool nice little detail there um update again we scrub back up we've got a detailed look of it courtesy of an account um called private selection i guess that's the ones that always get in the leaks of the shoes and shit let's see their detailed pictures also yeah, I love I love I love that kind of metal grated sort of like design on the top of the lever as well. It looks really cool. Maybe it could be a little bit more, you know, it could be a little bit more, um, prof you know, it could be a little bit more substantial. Maybe they could have made it, maybe actually made them individually stick out more. But I do like them anyway. I feel they look really cool. A little orange shit on the inside, and then we scroll back up again for the recent update again with that crappy account that does the fucking toe box thing which is fucking annoying, but hey, them. And then I think we've got official update here, courtesy of Type Booth account themselves. Um, so the update here, Japanese label is releasing its collaborative Dunklo neck this month. The brand has announced a special launch party in Tokyo. The commemorative event goes out on 10th of November. Admission to the event is free and includes drinks and pizza. Bloody hell, it's always to be in Tokyo, man. I'd love to be in Tokyo right now. And the skating session and the trick contents elsewhere, Sneakers has revealed that the shoe is scheduled to launch on November the 14th at $135 dollars usd check out the latest post i wonder am i the only one that i don't know i haven't bought a shoe on sneakers in a long time but do they even sell sbs on the uk sneakers or is it just still getting them directly from the skateboard um stores that sell sbs in the first place i wonder why because i don't really i feel like i've never seen an sb on the sneakers app in the uk at least anyway but for some reason the us guys always get sbs you know sold through sneakers i wonder why they don't do them here in the uk maybe i'm mistaken let me just double check my account oh no they do they do they do uh, i'm i'm dumb because there's a pair of um dunk sbs in that fog black coming out 
Um, so yeah, I'm completely wrong there. You know, in the black colorway, the black colorway with sort of like the the gum outside, as you can see there, that colorway is coming out for the UK one. So yeah, we do get SBs um, courtesy of the sneakers app, which is also beneficial because going to London skate shops is not the vibe, man. Those guys can be fucking cunts. They can be so mean. So it's nice that we got the ability to buy these shoes, you know, an anonymously online and stuff without having to, you know, fucking do a kickflip to get a shoe and shit. So big up them. Um, yeah, I love the shoe. It looks fucking awesome. Not really too mad at it in the slightest. And I think these are going to be very popular with a lot of people out there, especially because they're essentially a reverse panda dunk, but also limited edition, right? They've got all these limited edition ticks on them. The the little design on the le white leather bits, the, the orange tab. There's loads of little bits on it that you would instantly know, okay, these are special. You know what I mean? They're not like normal shoes. So people are going to be all over them. You know, people love to look like they've got special shoes on and shit. So <laughs> don't expect these to be hanging around anytime time soon so big up tight booth big up tight booth those shoes are gonna be absolutely everywhere when they eventually drop people are gonna be fighting kung fu style to get a pair of them people will be fighting kung fu style to get a pair of them i almost almost can guarantee that to be true um and then we also have to mention this actually courtesy where is it if i can get it up on the site oh where is it did i load it i thought i had it already here what's going on what is wrong with me here? Where did I have it? Oh, man, did I have it? I guess I don't. I thought I had what I needed to show you. Bear with me just one second as I try to get... Oh, there we go. I find it. Yeah. So, um, big up this girl called um, Nicole McLowen, um, who's got her own Hocker Mafete Free 2 collab coming out very soon. And to be fair, I've not been the biggest fan of this Nicole girl's design. She's the one that's known for taking like a, you know, a, a flipping Carhartt chore jacket and turning it into a bikini and shit, right? It feels a little bit like a one trick pony thing. Like how many more of these type of things can you do? You take an Ikea bag and make it into a hat. It's like, come on, it's a bit boring after a while. But regardless um she seems to be a very um astute designer usually um and i also love the fact that she uses her hands and stuff right there's not a lot of people out there that are actually fucking you know cutting and stapling and stitching and gluing stuff together with their actual hands and not just sitting there in front of a psd and um, clicking around on layers and stuff so definitely give her credit for that and I have to give her credit for putting together a sick collab with Hoka. Um, it looks fucking awesome. Essentially, it's basically modular in, in the way it basically has this weird sock design that makes it look like a high boot, but then you can also transform it into a low. And then it also has different straps so you can make it into like different types of models and shit. It's a really cool approach, um, to a sneaker collab. So definitely give her a lot of flowers for this one. It's courtesy of Hype Beast. It says a first look at Nicole McLuhan's Hoka Mafate Free 2 collab um and it looks really fucking hard um so designer um nicole mcclowan um has earned a significant following for her ability to create out of the ordinary designs that are often playful in nature and lean into a diy aesthetic following her time designing at reebok she has gone to work um from a range of footwear brands producing one-of-a-kind projects now she's seen up with hocker to introduce the latest silhouette the mafati was it mafati yeah mafati free two with a twist the mafati free two arrives in a combination of mafati two and a mafati Mafate free, modernizing the two with a street ready look that utilizes a quick lace system and a vibrant sole. From a Clubin's take on this new style, the gator has been applied, erasing its collar um, perfectly to convert it into a high top. The gator appears in black and red and neon with green stitching. Glass underneath the gator, the upper of the shoe features a gray and yellow and black and white lines. While the Mafate free set to make its inline debut on October 27th, Nicole's gator equipped collaborator will follow um, on November the third so definitely chase you for that as you can see there she's wearing them there out on the trails she's actually out there in the field doing the work we love to see that you got that great sock design right going on there and then I think if I check on the Instagram, actually, there's actually more pictures that show you kind of how you can basically um, take them apart and kind of make them your own. I think this one might be a good option to check, actually. Let's see if we can get this to load. Bear with me a second because my comp is on a mad one. But essentially, if I'm not mistaken, you can basically, you know, modular change them and stuff, right? So you've got this option here where she's got, oh, wow, I love this one. There are loads of different pockets all over the place where you can stuff little bits and pieces in here. Um, so this looks really cool the bright it's super bright in it wow and then of course this is what it looks like without the gator type of high top design you've got this big red um midsole here yellow accents and stuff and this nice yellow and black sort of mix on the top um and then of course you've got the logo there she's using a gator again 
and then more of the shoe itself as you can see here she, you know she's kind of like lacing up that thing on the outside of it to kind of protect it maybe it's to keep from fluff or stuff getting in on your shoe or maybe it's to help it to be a bit more waterproof i'm not really too sure but i'd love it anyway and then let's click this video here and maybe this will show us how you can basically take them apart if i'm not mistaken let's see if this works yeah she's turning around she's unzipping the gator thing removing it from the upper of the shoe and then you can basically change it so yeah all different ways to wear the gator and then collab releasing tomorrow um again you can clip it on the outside to make it look like a uh, it looks like a mule or something with the laces covered to be fair like a sandal you've got another way to put it where you can oh wow you can cover the back of it and basically make it kind of silver see kind of you know i guess waterproof so there's no seal there and nothing can get through and you can also wear them regular like regular hocker running shoes they look so good though man that's a really again um i, I think her designs can be a little bit one trick ponyish right there's only so many versions of an ikea bag turned into a backpack that i want to see but i do appreciate that the collab is very true to her design aesthetic and they're actually somewhat functional oh they kind of build on the vans isn't it that van shoe that she did they kind of build a little bit on that the van slip on that she did with all the little pockets the gardening shoe so that's actually a good little model there i'm not really too mad at that and then she, she's because she's done quite a few products isn't it i wonder this is really cool this new generation of designers how they're able to do different collabs with different brands because she's got a rebuilt collab there you've got a collab with vans and then you've got a collab with hocker so i like that the brands are not like signing these guys onto like exclusive contract because i always thought that was weird where you couldn't work with other brands if anything if you do great work for one that will influence people's likelihood to want to buy another stuff from another brand that you do. Do you know what I mean? Like if you do a great collab with let's say Puma and then you have a collab with another brand like Reebok or something, or, you know, New Balance, I'll actually more be interested in seeing what you do there because it's a different brand and it's going to carry the hype on for the other one. So they all kind of serve each other. I never got this whole thing about, oh no, you can't have, um, you can't work for the other company. So no, let me work for all of them and it all kind of feeds into each other. So yeah, you've got Reebok there. Um, I'm not too sure what this brand is here this blue shoe um the, oh yeah this is a uh, the 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 mountaineering footwear right um dynami footwear or dynami how, how you pronounce that word um and actually let's see that video what does that look like what's she doing she's walking into a shop with those shoes on um re what they call it's a reusable grocery bag the actual shoe is a grocery bag oh sick <laughs> that's kind of cool i'm not gonna lie that is kind of cool you take off the bags on the outside of the shoe and it turns into a little bag <laughs> obviously it's only a, it's only a vegan diet bag but it's pretty decent regardless right you can really fit fruits in there you can't fit a big steak or anything else but that looks fucking cool i'm not gonna lie that's really cool big up her that's really fun um so yeah vans um you got uggs collaborations here um you got crocs collabs and then you got the hockey on there on there is what they do eventually come out so yeah big up her they look fucking great can't be mad impossible to be mad at great design to be fair and i can't wait to see them when they eventually do drop when they eventually do drop and they've also got this picture here courtesy of an instagram account that i already mentioned i think beforehand and yeah they look great um i love that uh, i guess the the red dye kind of dies after a while because that red from before is really bright and red maybe it's an earlier sample i'm not too sure but that red now in this shoe looks really popping off of the screen that red looks amazing like that's actually screaming at you so i do love those so big up her um can't wait to see them when they eventually drop so it's a couple of big stuff coming out in it this um friday actually those are good stuff so yeah check them out if you're that way inclined check them out if you're that way inclined um i already put those up there right this is the hypebeast article over there the nm hypebeast um hockey on it on so yeah, definitely check them out too when they eventually come out um nicole mcclowan's hocker mafete free two collab coming at you very very soon keep an eye out for them if you're that way inclined keep an eye for them if you are that way inclined and then i guess lastly i also want to mention these balenciaga women's free excel trainers i'm upset they're only coming women's for some reason they should be in men's too but they've been covered in rhinestone crystals that's why i wanted to mention them this shoe has become i felt like this shoe has become a lot more popular than the triple s's i'm not too sure why maybe because the sole isn't so exaggerated but i feel like this free excel sneaker i see way more people wearing these day to day than i ever saw wearing triple s's um even though triple s's are still popular now because there's a lot of fakes to them i feel like now people are buying a lot of legit pairs of free excels than they ever did in the triple s's so i don't know what why this shape is so popular with people maybe because it looks like an asics or something um but i don't really like the exaggerated hill counter thing but the 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 design of having the the fucking rhinestone crystals all over them is fucking brilliant let's be honest man 
That looks so fucking cool. Imagine it's like glittering in the night as you fucking walk around. It kind of reminds me of that um cactus plant flea market um dunk that they put out a while back, right? That was covered in crystals also. Um again it's one thousand what is it? I think it's one thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars or something. So you know, you're paying for the crystals. Um maybe it'll be cool if they did a collaboration with Sawarski with them. I think that'll be pretty awesome as well. But these look really cool. I wouldn't mind wearing these, mate. I wonder if the crystals will fall off when you're out doing the techno stomp as I usually do. But they look so fucking good. I'd wear these in an absolute heartbeat. Um, 3XO, yeah, it's 1,735. Let's see if they've sold out. Oh, it's not available on pre -door. It's not even available to purchase just yet. It is a leather-free trainers, microfiber with rhinestones, ear, Balenciaga logo at the top and the back, embossed size on the upper, 3XL rubber branding on the tongue, poor tab made in China, wipe with a soft cloth. Yeah, I love them. I love them. They look absolutely crazy. They look very balmy, look very out there, but I absolutely love everything about these shoes. I'm not going to lie. They look so fucking good. It's a big up Balenciaga as per usual. Anyway, that has been the Exxon Zing Show episode number, I think, 721, I think. I'm not really too sure which episode it is. It should be 721. If you've had a good time enjoying this show and you want to give me some love, then make sure you leave me a five-star review on all the podcast apps that you use. That would be greatly appreciated. And, of course, if you're watching this premiere on YouTube, you, of course, can smash the like button, subscribe, all that good stuff. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions. That would be also appreciated. And, of course, in the description, there will be links to everything I spoke about. If you cannot see what I'm speaking about, listen to the audio side of things only you can see all the links to everything i'm speaking about via the description down below if that is your vibe but for now my friends i'm gonna head off to the gym thank you so much for tuning in and i'll see you guys again very very soon take care my friends be safe and peace